ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Sam Roberts Wrestling Podcast. Introducing your host from New York, here is Sam Roberts. Podcast is coming from, uh, I mean, not, not even miles, feet away from... Venice Beach, California, brother. Yeah, and feet away from someone's apartment. <laughs> yeah. Complex. We're not in a studio because I felt like since we're, I don't do a lot of shows on the West Coast, right. we should do them outside. Uh, Drew Gulak is here. Hi. Um, Hi. Yeah. Drew, what's the haps? Uh, the haps. I'm out here for a pro wrestling gorilla. Yes. That's the haps. Well, you do uh, a lot of shows that the fans have just become glued to. Like, pro wrestling gorilla has this fan culture, but Chikara has this fan mm-hmm. culture. Like... A lot of the organizations that you work for have very specific yeah. fan cultures. A lot of local independent groups that kind of just break out with media and stuff like that and have a following yeah. outside of their promotion. Does that become difficult to kind of... Are they different fan cultures? Like yes. you have to work differently to make yeah. sure that, that they're getting what they want? Yeah, they're very different. Like uh, Chikara is a great example. They're very family-oriented and, mm-hmm. and drawing a lot of like local families and stuff like that. People you wouldn't see at other wrestling events. Uh, typically, Pro Wrestling Gorilla, uh, for example, are like local fans who follow wrestling all over the world, and people who just come from crazy locations just to be a part of that atmosphere that they've cultivated. Right. Uh, Combat Zone Wrestling, like hardcore crazy fans that just want to see like a fight. Yeah. You know. Um, so yeah, I think every independent has their own little. It's interesting crowd. for you because you're a Philly guy, right? I'm a Philly guy. So when you get to Pro Wrestling Gorilla. And you see the West Coast fans who are still as rabid uh-huh. as Philly fans, but they're all nice. Uh, for the most part, like it's it's been great. <laughs> like that was weird for me. I went to this Pro Wrestling Gorilla show for the first time, mm-hmm. and like I see that, like during intermission, for instance, it's all general admission. Everybody's trying really hard to get a good seat. Yeah. But you leave during general admission. Nobody takes anybody's seats. No. You know, people feel bad if the chants get too mean. <laughs> You know, like when they're chanting yeah. at the referee, they're like, don't call him fat. Just tell him he's not good at his job. Right. And they boo the one guy who's being an a-hole. Right, like right, like right. That. They yeah. they boo the one fan. Can I say a-hole? You can right. say a-hole. You okay. can say asshole. You can say whatever you All want. Right, thanks. Yeah, you, you got it. Cool. Um, is that weird for you when you first start seeing that fan culture? Because if you did this show in Philly, I mean, they would want to light people on fire. I, it's weird. For, it's definitely, like, weird for people who have never like experienced that before um yeah. i've been very fortunate that i've i've had that experience and stuff like that so i'm, I'm able to tolerate you know I, I try to tolerate as many different types of audiences as i can right uh so for me personally no it's just great i just uh-huh. like seeing it it's really cool when you did you start when you started pro wrestling mm. did you have like a an amateur wrestling base or a grappling i did i was base? i did um i never like growing up I, I didn't really know about amateur wrestling and then i was in a city school so we didn't have it like in the elementary and the, uh, the middle school level, high schools where wrestling existed amateur. And I just happened to have a chemistry coach who was the, the head coach of the wrestling team. I had a chemistry teacher that was the coach of the wrestling team. And uh, he invited people out to try out for the team. I was like, yeah, I'm totally going to go for this. And uh-huh. it worked out. I just fell in love with it. What made that. you want to go for it? Like, were you a pro wrestling fan? Girl? I was totally a pro wrestling right. fan. Right. Yeah. I so. tried that too. See, this is where stories like change. <laughs> uh-huh. Because the guys in seventh grade, and they were like, we're going to put a bunch of seventh graders on the bus, and you can go and be on a wrestling team okay. at the high school. So I was like, I love pro wrestling. I love Macho Man. I'm going to join the amateur wrestling team. Just like Macho Man. But I was terrible at it. I mean, I went I went 0-13 okay. for the season. <laughs> uh-huh. It's hard. And then that was it. That and, was, then that I, was and then it. I was Done. like, no, I'm not meant to do this at did all. You, did you hate it? I mean... I didn't hate it. By the end, I thought it was funny that I kept losing. Like, I didn't have that, that <laughs> okay. thing that you're supposed to have they as an are, athlete. They are dedicated. Like, yeah. Especially, like, amateur wrestlers. Like, it's a whole different breed. People. So, then, did you, when you start falling in love with amateur wrestling, does mm-hmm. do you still keep your love for pro wrestling, or is yeah. that you do? I think it, it, like, made me appreciate it more, if yeah. anything. Because, uh, I don't know, I was, I was a deathmatch wrestling fan at that stage in my life. Right. And then, like, I was getting into the technical side, and I started really appreciating guys like Kurt Angle and stuff like that. Uh-huh. So I was doing what he did, you know, he was known for. Uh, and it's not easy. Right. So uh, it definitely helped me to kind of go in that direction. And that's weird. I guess growing up, did you watch Japanese wrestling a lot? Like when you not say deathmatches? No, no, I... All, everything, like, I knew from deathmatches or independent wrestling was through CZW. I see. That was it. I so, see. Secondhand through them, yeah, because yeah. they had a relationship with that. But uh, it wasn't until after I had 
fallen into it. Because it is weird. Like, I was a tape trader in high school. Okay. And it gets, it gets because you go Japanese wrestling, and it's whatever you're exposed to first. Yeah. Like, so when I was in high school, I thought all Japanese wrestling was barbed wire, <laughs> exploding cage, piranha. FMW. Yeah, 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 Big Japan. Yeah. Like, uh, And then you realize that if you want to go over here, they also have the best, like, technical, yeah. you know, grappling uh, wrestling. Bar none, yeah. Was it, was it surprising for you when you found out that there was a place in pro wrestling for that amateur background because for a lot you know aside from like old 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 school wrestling mm -hmm. when you look at like 80s 90s wrestling it couldn't be further from amateur wrestling right i don't know if i had expectations of mm -hmm. any kind as far as like what people would be tolerant of or accept as far as watching stuff uh i just knew that i really loved it and i wanted to do it and get good at it yeah um and i'm still trying to do that right uh so I think that all that all started clicking honestly like five years into my career. I I had been an amateur wrestler like when I started out. I was at my high school was my first show right. in my own singlet, like my wrestling singlet. Um, so I didn't really have much of I didn't go out there and was like, I'm gonna be the boogeyman or mm -hmm. I'm gonna be the undertaker or some variation of those characters. I was just me. Right. And I happened to be an amateur wrestler. Yeah. So that's what I applied to and tried to make it work. And then five years into my career I was like, All right, I just and I got fed up of wrestling a certain way with other people and said, mm -hmm. I'm just going to try some stuff out and see what happens. And eventually it started clicking. Yeah. Yeah, I guess when you want to wrestle that style, though, you kind of have to hold it for when you can find opponents that can do that with you. Yeah. If you if you want it to really mesh, sure. Otherwise, right. you're going to have differences. Just, you know, I guess that's if you're into, um, like, conflict theory and stuff like that and that mm -hmm. idea of progress, it's natural and it's good. Uh, so I, I got to the point where I didn't care if there was conflict. I just, this is, we're going to try this. Today. We're going to do yeah. this. Yeah. So do you end up eating people alive when you're out there at times if they're not? Oh, sure. Ready sometimes. For, yeah. yeah. You got it. Yeah. Got to eat them up sometimes. Yeah. You know? And you'll let them know like, okay, you should have come prepared for this. And if, if you they ask me, right. If they ask me, I'll let them know. Right. If they don't ask me, I'll shake their hand and say, thank you. <laughs> right. But they'll feel it either way. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. So don't every, know. Everyone's different. Yeah. Right. 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 Do you have a, I mean. I don't even want to ask about your favorite. Do you have a Do you have a promotion that you consider your home promotion? Just because I started training there, like Combat Zone Wrestling and yeah. Chikara too, like they're my home promotions. Right. Uh, they were the same school at the time when I really like got into the bulk of my training uh -huh. uh, under Chris Hero and Mike Quackenbush and Skyda. And that was like 2005, mm -hmm. right when I started out. Those are that's tech, that's where I started. So right. That's, so that's what your that's my roots. your home base is. Right. And when you enter into a PWG and Evolve and, and these places. Do you say to yourself, okay, how do I kind of mesh in with this culture as opposed to being the outsider, or does that not even affect you? You just go out there and do I've, Honestly, I've been so numb to it for a long time. Yeah. And, and some good advice that I was given was, like, you're, you were brought here for a reason. So that, that means, like, when you get here, don't change all of a sudden. Right, Stick right, right. Stick to your guns. Right. Like, uh, so if I'm, being, if I'm being, like, brought into an area or something, I just I do my thing, like right, you said. Right. How long into independent wrestling did you find that you were starting to kind of gain a reputation uh i don't even think i have a reputation now you don't i not really no like in the grand <laughs> scheme of things i mean it's whatever but I, it's it's always flattering when people do say like hey i, I know you from this area like, right i'm a fan of your work and stuff like that because i don't know i i just i feel like stuff is while it's so accessible in uncertain ways mm -hmm. um it's at least the the matches that I'm most proud of and stuff like that, you have to go through channels to acquire those things. Right. So it's it's limited to those fan bases. Right. In that right. sense. You know? I guess I guess it just there's a thing though now with wrestling where it's like just your name being brought into conversations more and more. You become oh yeah yeah I heard about that guy. I keep if, hearing about that guy. If anything, guy. what you're talking guy. about, it's not been to the last year or two. That's it. Mm -hmm. So not till nine ten years into my. And career. is that good? like. Do you ever go through a phase where you're like, I got to change something up because I got to be one of these buzzy guys or you just go, I'm going to do my thing. I'm going to be the best at being me. And this is what you I'm always doing. have to be open to the idea of change. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so, I mean, if something sticks out, seems like an opportunity to change things up or mix them up, I think it would be uh, unwise to not try that mm -hmm. that route, because if you don't like you'll never know. Right. Um, but I've never been like, all right, uh, today I'm going to wear all red and long tights <laughs> yeah. and knee pads and change up my look completely and start doing, you know, aerial attacks all yeah. the time. Um, it's just been like, if I feel it, I'll, I'll do it. It's, right. it's very much as it, as it goes. What me. were you doing at first that you felt like for the first five years that you had to just change up completely? Uh, just routines, just straight up routines. Just, right. You know, 
uh, sticking to a track, not not thinking about connecting with an audience so much. So like you'd learn a set of moves in school mm-hmm. and be like, okay, this is my match that I do. Exactly. Or whatever whatever happens to be your opponent at the time. Like yeah. however they format anything yeah. if they do. Um, just getting fed up with running tracks and right. sticking to scripts and stuff like that. And is there an aha moment when you're in there and you're like, like if I just don't do what I was planning on doing, that there is, there's like so much room for improv here mm-hmm. that if I just go, I could do this all the for time me, and for it's me fun and it's fresh. I know for me there was. I know for some friends of mine who uh, never really tried that stuff and I was like, we're doing it today. Yeah. They have had that experience. And it's it's not like, yeah, the crowd's going crazy cheering for you like an adrenaline rush. Uh-huh. It's more like an unlocking of, a, of something up here. Right. And that's such a cool feeling in a right. different way. Right. Yeah, because now it's not like... Yeah, you, like you said, it's not the crowd pushing you to do something. It's this sort of, like, I can be creative here. Yeah, like you're, letting, you're letting your guard down. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. the best way I could put it. Right. And just... then, then I would imagine you can get to a point where you can get those moments of adrenaline rush and blah, 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 because now you're doing things that sure. you never have done before, so the crowd's never yeah. seen you do before. Yeah, if you're an adrenaline junkie, then I'm <laughs> yeah. sure it's possible. You yeah, know? yeah. Are you in a, do, you like, do you like the adrenaline part of it or do you like those moments more? I think I think you gotta like the adrenaline yeah, part of sure. it to kind of do like such a physical thing like we do mm-hmm. um but I think and more rewarding for me is when something like that happens when I see growth either in myself or in someone else that's the or even in like the company or the the story of the match right and an understanding from the audience that to me is the coolest thing yeah when you're when you're about to wrestle a guy like Timothy Thatcher who we saw you wrestle over the weekend for PWG, mm-hmm. like you yeah, only get the crap beat out of me. That's, that's what, what I mean. Saying. And yeah. like, and like, you watch it, and I watch it. And I watch a lot of wrestling, and I under, like. But when I'm watching, it, I'm like, no, these are two guys. Especially the beginning, like the first half of the match. It's like, no, we're just gonna go out there and really wrestle, wrestle. Mm-hmm. Like we're gonna do the holes, and if I break out, then I break out, and if I don't, it's not. There was no sort. Yeah, of, we were fighting. Yeah, there was no we give were, and take. We were, it was we like we were killing each other. Yeah. Yep. Do you know going in? Like, <laughs> do you have to put yourself in a different mindset where okay, this is gonna be really painful uh i'm always kind of like anticipating that you are because any if you slip and fall the wrong way you're done right. you know for a week or so or longer than that if you're unlucky um that's something you got to accomplish i think in training early on mm-hmm. just, just not of, being afraid of yeah that, i mean like i as a trainer myself that's one of the first things that like people have to like, break down is kind of just opening themselves up to letting their body kind of lead them yeah. through the the motions and the techniques yeah and once they get comfortable doing that only then can they start to really focus on the other stuff right you know otherwise that's just going to be a wall yeah 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 um what about that as a trainer like do you like do you see yourself going forward i mean you're a young guy but like i feel like a trainer is a job that you can kind of have for a little bit longer in pro wrestling Mm -hmm. like there's not that sort of window yeah you can do it for a while do you see yourself being a trainer long yeah, term? Absolutely. That's where you, I love I love teaching people and helping people. I've always kind of gravitated towards that kind of stuff, even outside of wrestling. Like that's just I love seeing people learn and get better. And yeah. Yeah. It's rewarding in its right. own way, you know. And watching them like watching some guy in a ring who you saw like just come in off the street mm-hmm. and now he's actually doing and, Yeah. And, and you know, living their dream. Yeah, yeah. And successfully. Yeah. And safely. Right. Yeah. Right. Hopefully. 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 Is there, hopefully. Is it, I would imagine it gets frustrating though, because there's a lot of people who must come in, who've watched a lot of wrestling. Like I just said, I have. Who are like, no, no, no. I know it. Sure. And I'm you, sure that's true of any like field like that. Like whether it's making pizzas or, sure. or an actor. You sure. You know, like, oh yeah, I watch a lot of movies. I can do this. And okay, cool. You're out. Like, done immediately. You, right. You know, like that's right. that happens sometimes. And do you have to? Do you do you have to? remove those people or do they end up just it's all situational yeah uh i i think i'm a very patient person i'll uh-huh. say that uh so i've i've seen a lot of stuff and uh, i've been able to tolerate a lot of stuff and i've seen people who just have no patience for it whatsoever uh-huh. and get out you're done and that's that's the end of it but i i try to you know i try to be understanding of right. situations right your brother's a wrestler too right he is right yeah. and uh what's that like is that a good thing like I having, love it. you do. I used to beat him up, throw him on the couch <laughs> and stuff. He would never win. Yeah, he wouldn't. Never. No, no, and he still doesn't, right? Not really. Well, not really. No, no. no. Um, Sorry, Rory. <laughs> but there's no like. Hi, Rory. It doesn't get like weird. No professional jealousy. It's just you guys helping each other out. Me and him. No, yeah. not weird at all. That's good. I don't. I don't think it's weird at all. Um, 
it's been awesome. I've been getting to work with him more now. So yeah. So it's like the most fun I'm having. Right. Because it's like it's my brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Like we beat each other up. This on the is couch. what we used to do. Yeah, 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 yeah. In the backyard or whatever. Pretend we were the brood walking through <laughs> our living room in our underpants. Really cool guys. Right. You know, like. Well, you're gonna. I now mean, we're doing that in a ring. That's what I mean. Yeah. Like if people go to a show and see you two and you come out in like puffy shirts. Vampire. Vampire right. caves <laughs> actually right now. Yeah. You're just living your dream. Uh, what do your parents think about uh, the boys? Uh, it's weird. Like my parents always uh, still want me to like go out and pursue a real career uh-huh. because this isn't a real career. <laughs> right. Uh, so um, honestly, the first time my mom said she was proud of me for accomplishing something in wrestling was like last week in 10 years. That was the f- what first was time it? she's actually said something like that. Of course, she prefaced it by saying, you know, I'd still like you to become a dentist or go back <laughs> to school and get your bachelor's degree in, in this. Um but no, I, I I got a bit part doing like some some work on TV, and she saw right. it. So that oh, was really course. cool. So that I, so after everything that you've done, mm-hmm. your, your mom's proudest moment was when you got to arrest. I think it was so much Vince McMahon. I mean, that seems like you're like mom. I'm killing myself every weekend. Right. Well, like, she, yeah. I think it's just the fact that like, all right, there he is on this stage with someone who she knew peripherally through us. Right. You know, as, as someone you know important. Um, and that she had she had a tangible something to like show to her friends, right? To say she was proud. He's on the TV. Yeah, I mean that's that's what it is. Isn't right. It? You just have to wait until I think she said like you could have always been an actor. Or something <laughs> <like> that. <laughs> what are those? What was that like for you? Great. Going to run and and being a cop. Oh, and, it was cool. Yeah. And getting to arrest Vince yeah. McMahon. It's and doing uh, anytime all that. anytime you get a chance to work with people who are like the best. Yeah. Uh, it's it's something that should be treasured yeah and uh, i don't know if it's even ever going to really fully sink in to me like the the crazy opportunity that that just that little thing was right emotionally right um so when so you go in, when you go into a wwe locker room because you've been in a, a few times when you go backstage are you just absorbing and absorbing and absorbing everything i try to be i try to learn as much as possible yeah. in any situation yeah. so there it's like i'm just oversensitized mm-hmm. you know right right because there's just things going on everywhere mm-hmm. and like half of it must be like you said you as a kid watching the brood being like this is what it is this is what it is <laughs> sure. and then the other half is you as an adult learning to be a better yeah. pro wrestler absolutely it's amazing and how has because uh, it kind of came out of nowhere when wwe or nxt i guess it was announced that they were kind of partnering with Evolve. Mm. Was that a surprise for you? Like, because I don't know for me, and I think a lot of fans, it was like. Well, I don't even know like the full extent of the relationship. Uh, it's It was awesome to see Sami Zayn show up on a show. Right. Uh, it's just something that our fans don't ever get that kind of acknowledgement, I feel like. Yeah. When, especially like a place like PWG, they feel they're, they're part of the company just as much as the wrestlers, if yeah, yeah, not yeah. more. Um, like those fans are PWG, you know, those fans are Evolve. Um, but they all come from watching, you know, the national stuff, WWE right, of course, or whatever it of is course. at the time. So for them to like come down and be like, no, this exists. Yeah. Is so rewarding on a different level. Yeah. For them. And I mean, for you and, and everybody yeah. working at Evolve, it's right. got to be like, this is great. Because at least yeah. on some level, they're aware of our promotion. They're aware of us. I mean, they did the... You know, top ten evolve guys right. on .com a while right, back. Right, right. So I mean, that, that's kind of huge. Yeah, it's like uh, there's light at the end of the tunnel for those guys. It's possible. You know, right. like I, when I started, I was like, oh, WWE will never, it never even be an option. I don't even know how to get in touch with them. And like to look back on that now is just really surreal. Right. You know? Right. It's really cool. So you did. So when you started, you say that, but like, was your goal still, you know, as when when you're starting, starting to be in WWE, or was that so far out of the realm? You're like. It's not even a goal. I, just, I never thought of it as, you a didn't. Pos- as a possibility. I, did, I didn't realize that it was, like, possible. Right. Um, so what was the goal? To just get paid to wrestle and that's it? I just wanted to have a pro wrestling match. And I, honestly, I just wanted to be. I just want to get good at it. I just, right. Because I like it so much. And I'm not unliking it. Like uh-huh. Some people get upset about stuff if they don't, you know, move as fast or whatever. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I've never really had that goal, mm-hmm. that one goal in mind. So. Do you have any goals now? Nope. Or is it just, like, just keep getting better? And <laughs> just keep getting better. See where this leads. See where it goes. Are you happy with where it's led yes, so far? I would much. imagine that, yep. yeah. I think that happens, too. I guess, I think most people, when they're young, do start with goals. Mm-hmm. Like, they go, and they have the WWE goal, they have the this goal, or the Japan goal, or whatever it is. And then as you get older, you realize that you don't really have any control over any of that stuff. I guess, yeah. So you got to just kind of be good. Mm-hmm. 
mm-hmm. and move forward, and that's kind of it. Yeah, if you're not uh, if you're not happy, I think that's the biggest thing. If you're unhappy with what you where you're at, right, or where you think you're headed, right, like, then maybe it's time to reevaluate what you're doing. Yeah, and and you see guys that are unhappy in the pro wrestling business on every step in life in, and in life yeah. Yeah, in every business really how many friends you got that the job and all of them are miserable. mundane yeah you know yeah 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 so what do you do to to keep things fresh and be happy doing what you're doing because it's easy i mean even in I the don't indies, know. I play a lot of video games is that it That's what are sometimes. you playing uh right now i just got fallout 4 i just got it for christmas i'm like terrified i'm gonna lose like six months of my life it. <laughs> yeah i'll give myself like an hour and a half yeah and that's it. But I also, like, I got to a place really early in the game where they said you need a bobby pin to pick this lock. Uh-huh. And I don't have any bobby pins. Really? They're, like, everywhere, dude. What are you doing? Well, I haven't found one bobby pin. I don't know what are I'm doing. Are you into the campaign yet? Did you, get, did you like, get into the storyline at all? Or? Well, I, I went into the, the building. You can't unlock the first thing. You got to, like, up, you got to level up, bro. I don't know. I went into the building, <laughs> and I shot a bunch of people in the building, and then they were, like, so I met the people, and they were, like, you got to go through that door. And they were, like, you don't have any bobby pins. It's like fuck this. I'm done. All right, you gave up already. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, there's a lot more to the game after that. Uh, well, if it helps, there's a game called Rare Replay out. You mm-hmm. might like Banjo Kazooie's on it. It's oh, really that's good. cool. Yeah, yeah that playing, sounds good. Just got an Xbox One and playing tons of Banjo Kazooie. That sounds great. Yeah, yeah like <laughs> Banjo Kazooie, Toe Jam and Earl, Crash Bandicoot. I could do that stuff. Yeah, Parappa the Rappa. I, Parappa the Rappa. I was good. Seaman. At. Yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> C-Man. Dreamcast. Wasn't that what, that Dreamcast was that? game yeah. with the fish with the face on it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, it was really weird. There we are. This was, is where our conversation is. It right was now. really weird. <laughs> who was your who who were your favorites growing up, wrestling wise? Wrestling wise, Not Ken Shamrock. Wise. You love Ken Shamrock? Did I love Ken Shamrock? He said it's too much. <laughs> you did. You yeah, I took to him. I don't know why. All right, so like it happens in phases. So Hulk Hogan when I was really little. Sure. Uh, then came like Bret Hart. A little okay. bit later, and then it was Ken Shamrock, of course Stone Cold, and like The yeah. Rock, and then like the Acolytes. I love the. Acolytes. You love the Acolytes. Yeah. <laughs> Farouk is the man. Well, you know what? Because you get older, I guess, and you like Ken Shamrock, Farouk, Bradshaw. Yeah. These are the guys that strike you as like it's my King of Trios team. <laughs> <laughs> like I don't know about characters, but those guys can kick someone's ass. We talking for about sure, you don't know sure. about characters. You never seen them do the juggling act, <laughs> the cycles and stuff, dude. It's no, awesome. no, I don't know. I just know <laughs> they could hurt someone. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And that's what you got into. Have you ever thought about, like, why didn't you ever go the MMA route if you're, like, have such a kind of grappling? I didn't have the passion for MMA. Like, you never did? No, I just, I don't know. Um, I've I've done, like, Naga and stuff like that, like yeah. grappling tournaments. I took judo in college for a year. Um, I've, I've dabbled in Krav Maga, uh-huh. like weird stuff. Sure. Uh, my buddy does Muay Thai and Jiu-Jitsu. So I've always kind of been around grappling. Um, and it's... It's a fun art form, just like amateur wrestling to me. I feel like I had that, so I didn't really want to do much. It was never like, that's my career. I'm going to be right. a, a fighter or a wrestler or, anything, or an amateur wrestler or anything like that. Right. Yeah, and I guess, I guess I feel like a big difference between MMA and pro wrestling is like the crowd when you're MMA, even though there's a crowd there, like UFC draws giant crowds, right. they can't be an element in the fight. Like as a fighter, you have to lock out the crowd. Sure. Absolutely. Whereas yeah. a pro wrestler, you're trying to kill. Like you're trying to kill to win. Right. As pro wrestling, you're trying to perform that. Right. But it's you're performing it, and the crowd becomes part of a like, yeah. part of the thing. It's a crazy form of acting. Yeah. It's an insane form of acting. You didn't do school plays or anything like that. Sometimes. You did yeah. do school plays. I was actually on. I was on the stage crew for school plays. I did uh, day camp plays. What's what, the, what are the, what, day camp plays? All right. So we have like. You know what day camp is? Like I mean, like that's when you go to camp, you don't sleep yeah, there, right? I did, like, every year there'd be a play. I did the plays there. What plays did you do? The Music Man. <laughs> you <called>. did? Uh, <laughs> Oliver Twist. Well, who were you in Oliver Twist? Fagan. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you were, you were the bad guy. I was the old cranky Jewish guy. That's cool. That's me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, running all the pickpockets and everything. Uh, you got to pick a pocket or two, man. Yeah. And you, but how come you gave up singing then? Uh, so, uh, not much of a vocalist. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't. Yeah. You didn't have a passion for that either. No, no. For some reason, MMA... And uh, show tunes didn't. I've always. I, I'm actually a musician. I do play. I play guitar and like piano and stuff like that. You do. It's all self-taught, just for fun though. It's never. It was never like I want to make this my living. Right. It was, okay. Cool. I'll learn this. It's fun. Right. That's and cool. is that also because I feel like a lot of people in wrestling, it ends up being their entire lives. It helps to have yes. something outside of it. It really where does. You can, you yeah. Know. No. I'm lucky that I have a lot of interests outside of wrestling that I like. Uh, graphic design, like random. Like, that's just something I like doing. You do graphic design too? Yeah. So, yeah. did you design the shirt? This one's mine, yeah. It was one of my, that. my, my first one, actually. That's also very, like, I think a lot of people too, whether it's wrestling, whether it's uh, uh, radio, whether it's whatever, yeah. broadcasting, 
Like people don't realize that the tools are so much more accessible now than they were before. Yes. Oh, like totally. for somebody not to be like learn video editing, learn graphic design, learn, and then you don't have to find a graphic designer to design your shirt. Yeah, it's all DIY. You, right, you've got that skill set. You see that through you. wrestling too. I think a big thing. I think one of the biggest things, like you were saying, tape trading earlier. Right. Like I'm probably the last generation that had to pop a VHS into study. Sure. And then YouTube came out right as right as like you know right. training started picking up and right. wrestling started picking up. So that's just changed everything do you think yeah do you think that the fact that everything's so much easier is it is it better or does it because you had to work just to get the tape to train sure right yeah there so, i think you're saying like generation wise like there's there you, you don't have to start here like when you have to work to find the tape mm -hmm. that means the first step is work right yeah. now you the first step isn't work it's just youtube leisure right yeah so it's like does it is it just that one step that's different or does it carry throughout? There's an, there's an understanding of people who like started before then and people who started after then. And I've had discussions with a number of my peers about that. Like there's that, like we had to actually do it the hard way right. as opposed to them doing it the easy way. Personally, I don't think, I don't think it's anything real. I think that's just society progressing yeah. and stuff like that. I mean, because people older than us said the same thing about, Oh yeah, whatever it was. Telephones. Yeah, everything was tougher for them, so they're yeah, back stronger in my day, for it. Yeah, I was sending telegrams. Like, yeah, yeah. All right. So is that what you try to do as a teacher? Not fall into the, you know, old man sort of. Well, you know, a few kids had it as tough as I did. Uh it's hard not to sometimes. Yeah. But then it's it's all the same. Like, like you said, that generation before was saying the same stuff, and they're just feelings. I I personally don't try to externalize that to my guys who are training because mm -hmm. I don't want that to rub off on them. Uh -huh. uh, I think that what they should be doing is enjoyable. Right. If they're not, then they're wasting their time. Right. So we try to you know make it that way for them to perceive it as such, even though we don't sugarcoat things if if that's what I'm giving off. Right. Which is I don't know. That's just something that you got to learn, I guess, over time. Right. Kind of just. I mean, it's supposed to be difficult, right? Mm -hmm. Like if it was if it was easy, then. Yeah. You'd be giving people the wrong impression because right. once you get in front of a crowd, it's not easy. No. <laughs> it's, it's not easy before you get in front of a crowd. Like I said, you fall, you're done, you know? Right, right. So. What are, what are the, what's the worst injury that you've experienced? The worst one I've ever experienced? Yeah. Uh, physically, I mean, I've had damage to my face and stuff like that. That's probably going to be there forever. Um, but, like, pain-wise, I've had my sacrum knocked out of alignment. I don't even know what a sacrum is. It's the bone in between your hips. Oh my gosh! Above your tailbone? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that that's been hurt pretty like bad. Like at the bottom of your spine? And I could barely walk. It took me forty minutes to walk across a hallway just to get into a shower at one uh. point. Um, that's when I watched Lost on uh -huh. Netflix. Uh -huh. A lot of downtime. <laughs> you had to catch up on the whole season. It just happens. It's a great show. <laughs> Ending was kind of shit though, but yeah. Yeah. How'd you break your sacrum? I didn't break it. I, I got knocked or, out. Or just, I just took it. a body slam. Like I said, that's what you say. So it's like you can you could prepare for the wildest stunts ever. Yeah. And it's that one little probably just like didn't stretch enough that day, mm -hmm. or you know didn't lift properly the week before, and it just that was right. it. And it's done. Well, man, I mean, I would ask you like where you see yourself going in the future, but it seems like you're not really Consum thinking about the future. It's like where am I going tomorrow? Yeah, Let's as long as I'm better. as long as I'm healthy and enjoying it, and you know, is there opening any, opportunities? Is there are, is there anybody that you want to wrestle Ooh. like especially in the near future before in the what near year future yeah i do want to fight my brother you do yeah 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 put on like a it's been a while yeah it's been a while mom's taking notice of it now so <laughs> yeah i definitely want to have like a good one with my brother yeah That'd be cool yeah so, cool man yeah well thanks for hanging out thanks uh, for bringing me out on this nice sunny yeah. day i'm really glad that nobody this building we really are we're sitting on a stoop in front of someone's building mm -hmm. like we literally were sitting on the stairs before but then somebody came up to go to their house. We had a good so location we were like, out. Today. Yeah. yeah. So we were like, we have to move. Uh, so we'll get out of here and let people go back to their house, I guess. <laughs> Sounds good. But uh, good talking to you, man. Yeah, thank you very much. For sure. Hey, it's Sam Roberts. I hope you enjoyed that wrestling interview from Sam Roberts Wrestling Podcast. You can go to notsam.com to subscribe to that podcast. But I upload videos like that on this YouTube channel all the time. So if you don't already subscribe, subscribe now. It's on the side of the page. I made it real easy. Click the button. Subscribe to the page. Subscribe to the page.